My name is John Gillespie. We'll be talking today about the third of four GRC applications. This one is vendor risk management. We talked last time about risk management, which is the internal position of the company when it comes to the risks of simply doing business. We have people, we have machines, we have business processes, we have buildings, and simply because we have those, we inherit risk. We also do business with third parties. And that brings a whole nother level of risk. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We'll go over what vendor risk management is. We'll do an overview, a demo, and then have a short QA. Vendor risk management is four different things. It's the process of identifying the risks of having a relationship with a vendor. And it doesn't matter what type of vendor it is. You have a vendor who provides physical security. You have vendors that provide food services, potentially. You have janitorial, you have IT, you have cloud. ServiceNow is a cloud provider, so ServiceNow is technically a vendor that would have to go through this whole process. And if the client uses vendor risk management in ServiceNow, then ServiceNow potentially you know, could have to go through their own type of vendor risk assessment through the vendor portal. Once you've identified those risks, you then evaluate the internal perspective of the relationship to get the feedback from the people who know the vendor relationship best. And we're talking about the internal vendor risk managers, the internal vendor managers who deal with the vendor on a daily, weekly basis. Once you've gotten their perspective of what the inherent risk is of having a relationship with the vendor, then you move to getting the vendor's perspective of that relationship. And your focus is going to be on what, if any, is their level of compliance with applicable areas of concern. This has a lot to do with the type of vendor that we're actually talking about. You're not going to go to a physical security or a food service or a janitorial vendor and ask them for uh, information on their network security practices and procedures potentially. They don't provide that service. You do want to know that they are compliant in their own processes, but you don't necessarily need to go to that level of detail with that specific type of vendor. There are a lot of different ways and methods of communicating with a vendor and getting the information, the most common of which is called the SIG, the Standardized Information Gathering Spreadsheet. It's provided by the St. Louis Group. Every year, they put out a new version, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The nice thing about ServiceNow is that acknowledging that there are existing capabilities out there that people already have in place, they have built in to vendor risk management the idea of the integration and being able to leverage the pre-existing data that vendors have already gathered. We, as a potential vendor, have all of this information sitting there. We've already gone through the different processes, the different assessments with people who want to use us. And ServiceNow basically has said, great, you've got that. Let's let you use that. And we're going to see that here in just a few minutes. Once we have the vendor's information, then we evaluate the risk of simply using it. Are we going to have a relationship with this prospective vendor? And if so, do we need to address any issues and then go back and forth with them and, and get anything fixed in order to evaluate and approve going forward having that relationship? We do this via a two-step process. There is an internal side that we talked about, and it's called the tiering assessment. This basically uses the out-of-the-box assessment engine to send a survey to the vendor manager, any additional people who have firsthand knowledge of that vendor, and it basically asks them a series of questions, prompting them to provide enough information so that you can get a baseline risk of using that vendor. Once we have that baseline risk, that will help us define what we need to go to the vendor for. So we got our, our baseline risk internally. Now we're going to go external back to the vendor and we're going to present a series of questionnaires and document requests. And we're gonna do that inside of ServiceNow, but outside of the normal service portal or frame set. 
Once we've done that and we have this completed, then we just simply set up the automation that allows us to reevaluate on a regular basis. Now, we talked about basically having the vendor, giving them the assessments, these document requests inside of ServiceNow. There's a lot of security concerns that clients have. What do you mean they're going to get into my instance? Technically, it is true. They will get into the instance. But ServiceNow has actually addressed this with two different things. One, the moment you turn vendor risk on, it will actually install two different roles, the SNC internal and the SNC external. Every single individual that does not have the SNC external role already, say for instance, you've turned CSM on and it installed it, but every single individual is going to get the SNC internal role. Anytime a vendor contact is created, that vendor contact will automatically get the SNC external role. The two roles basically combine to do two things. It locks anyone with the internal role to either the frame set or the service portal. And it locks anyone with the external role to the vendor portal or another external portal such as the CSM portal. The vendor portal, which is included, is a completely separate and segregated service portal, which is only accessible to the vendor contacts with that SNC external role. And that means that even as true admins, we cannot, although we may be able to log into the vendor portal, we cannot access data through the vendor portal. You will actually get an error that you're not allowed to access the portal. So even as admins, we are locked out of that. Anyone with the SNC external portal will not be allowed to log into either the service portal or the frame set. It is completely separate and segregated. But because it's service now, it is also completely collaborative. And we'll see that here in just a few minutes. The enhancements to vendor risk have been many over the past couple of versions. First of all, vendor risk started out as just the vendor assessment. The first primary and major enhancement was the addition of the internal tiering assessment and the SIG integrations, which started a couple of years ago and allowed the standardized information gathering spreadsheet from 2017 to be used. Every single year that the St. Louis group puts out a new SIG, ServiceNow will put out a new integration point and allow that SIG to be used. The latest one that's coming in Paris allows for 2019 and the 2020 versions of the SIG. They've also in Paris brought about the idea of a vendor engagement. There, this, this was actually missing earlier and it's, it's basically the concept of the industry types, the vendors that are brought in to do specific work in say facilities management or security uh, or food service or construction, you can create an engagement record for that vendor to cover their work over a span of time. Uh, and say that for this engagement, we want to look at multiple vendors to work with us over this span. Uh, each one would have its own assessment, but that engagement could then allow you to compare them. The next is the vendor hierarchy and the concept of just like departments, companies may have sub-departments which you would want to have a relationship with. So you might want to have all the levels of that company inside of ServiceNow and then be able to assess the different levels differently. The ability to use the electronic signatures has been brought into vendor risk, not only internally, but also externally for vendors themselves. And you can require those. And then there's, there's the final enhancement, and that is the risk area. As we talked about last time, risk is set up and categorized by frameworks. And those frameworks allow us to group and categorize risk and bring a higher level perspective, almost a snapshot of risk across the enterprise. Well, with risk area categorization, you can now include the vendor risk in that higher level snapshot. The final enhancement to vendor risk is not an actual plugin. It is probably the holy grail of GRC. I've mentioned that term a couple of different times. When we talk about GRC and its different modules, policy and compliance, which we'll talk about next week, risk management, vendor risk management, and audit management. While they are designed to work 
independently of each other and they can be installed independently of each other and run in independently. They work best when working together. The holy grail of GRC would be to have a complete and robust risk management framework and a complete and robust policy and compliance management framework that integrate together so that every single risk has a correlating set of controls that mitigate that risk to the enterprise. Acknowledging that vendors bring risk, vendor risk and those assessments can be related to specific controls themselves. And what that allows us to do is look at the risk across the enterprise internally and externally, just through business processes operationally and the relationship to a vendor and the mitigating control sets that not only we have to use, but that the vendor should be using also. So controls can be related to the internal side of the house, the servers, the assets, the applications and business processes, but they can also be related to the vendor's processes by the questions we ask them. That's where we want to get clients to. And normally when we look at projects, that is usually a wave three or four or even five. Most clients are not ready to go that far and may never be. Building out a complete and robust risk management or policy compliance management or vendor risk management can be a year and a half's worth of work. The initial setup is pretty easy. It's not difficult. And there are not a lot of changes that you really want to make because of the different integration points between all of the three modules. But getting, to, getting the company, getting the client to the point where they are able to manage this and start gathering the data over time, becoming comfortable with each of the three modules, and then building the integration points between all three with all of the data relationships, that's what takes so long. And people, we have to give them time to do that. There are a lot of ServiceNow account reps and salespeople that I have dealt with in the, in the, in the past five years who will often push for risk policy compliance and vendor risk all in one shot. Let's do one big, big project and get it all up and running. While that's doable, it almost guarantees a wave two and a wave three because wave two will be optimization of the processes within the system as they find things that they missed the first time. Wave three is going to be the integration points between them. And yes, that can take a year and a half to get there. It will take time guarantee it. All right, let's jump into the demo. And we have demo 15 here. If anybody wants to get in, it, get in and take a look at the actual system, we have vendor risk installed completely. You'll notice that this is the Paris version. We do have both vendor and engagement level. We're going to stick with the vendor side of the house because we're going to go back and forth between both the vendor risk administrator and the vendor contact today. We're gonna to go back and forth between the two. We always start with a vendor record. And with vendor records, I'm going to pull one up here. We're gonna look at Acer as a vendor. Acer provides hardware, of course. Uh, it is a valued partner with a rank tier. And from a vendor tier, it is, we could say that it's critical or high to our business processes. We have our internal vendor manager. We can have a business owner. We can have our vendor type. We can have a lot of different data about them. But right now, we just want to do the internal side of the house. Let's look at the perspective of the, um, of the, the vendor manager on the relationship between Acer as a vendor and our company. We're going to do that by going down to what's called a tiering assessment. And we can look at this one. Tiering assessment has been created. And it's basically a record that allows us to generate a survey. We do this because we, over time, will generate multiple tiering assessments historically so that we can look at them from year to year and then compare the internal perspective over time. We have sent a questionnaire to, the, uh, to this individual, so Adam Harrow. We can look at the questionnaire here, and it is using the standard assessment engine functionality. All of GRC at the moment uses the same assessment engine that the rest of ServiceNow uses. So if you've built a survey using the assessment engine, then you can build 
a questionnaire for a tiering assessment. Same thing for the questionnaires sent to the vendor itself. It still uses the assessment engine. The questionnaire is basically a set of questions using the assessment engine. And if you haven't seen it, we'll look in the designer real quick and that should become very clear how easy this is. The questions are all around the relationship of the vendor in specific areas. But what is our nature of the relationship? What is our nature of our interaction? And what is the vendor's behavior? What is that relationship impact on compliance and risk management? Each of these has a set of questions and we can go into them. It looks like things are a little slow in the instance at the moment. such as how would you characterize our relationship? Do they provide a strategic, competitive, or operational advantage? If it's a prospective vendor, yeah, it could definitely be in the, in the future, but if you've used them for a couple of years and you're being asked to compare vendors, then what is their current operational advantage of using them? What's the complexity of switching from this vendor to an alternate? What's our nature of interaction here? Do they handle or access company IP? or a customer's IP? Do they store, process, or transmit PII, et cetera, et cetera? We're getting into the details of the relationship from multiple perspectives, security-wise, data-wise. We wanna get the internal view of the risk of using this vendor. What's gonna happen is when we look at the results, when this comes in, it's going to give us a vendor tier. And this will be the risk internally of using the vendor. And let's just say that we come back with a moderate risk. What this is going to allow us to do is then decide what is the next step. And there are two points here. You can automate this process based on the vendor tier that is scored. And there is scoring behind the questions and answers. Based on that vendor tier, we can automatically generate a vendor risk assessment, assign questionnaires and document templates to it, and have it ready for the vendor risk manager to send it to the vendor. Most companies do not start there. They turn that automation off. They want that second set of eyes on the vendor risk assessment process. They wanna build it themselves. So having defined that this is a moderate risk for the enterprise, we're going to then go to the next step and we're going to build out an assessment for the vendor to then respond to. So I'm gonna go back to my vendor record and we can see the assessments by going to the assessment tab and there's several in here. I'm gonna just open one of them up. And so I have a risk assessment for the vendor ACER. It applies to the vendor and we don't have a questionnaire or document request and that's fine. This is part of the automatic um, generation of these records and it relies on some, some, some configuration up front. So let's talk about that real quick. First of all, I've got to ha have a vendor contact. Now, every vendor has a set of contacts that they deal with. And this is where the SNC external versus SNC internal role comes from. The vendor contacts are actual user accounts. They are hidden from the user records in the user profile table, but they are user accounts. They are provided a password. They can log into ServiceNow. If you build a password reset option for them, they can reset their own password. But these individuals are users in the system that can update records and they are record specific to their assessment for their company. There has to be a primary contact and that primary contact has the primary contact true. They have to have an email. And ServiceNow does send them emails with here's your link, here's your Here's your ID, here's your initial password, requires them to set their password and clear the system generated one, and then gives them a view into ServiceNow that looks like this. This is the Acer manager, Acer one. 
He's the primary contact for Acer with our vendor assessment portal. He's in the portal right now, and he can see a lot of different things. He can see him, uh, his, his own company and that he is the primary contact. He can see the different engagements. So Acer provides projectors. Acer pr provides service outsourcing, and it provides software to the company. So I can have different assessments for those individuals. What the vendor can also do is create his own team. And that's why we have multiple groups or, or multiple users here as vendor contacts. The vendor manager, that primary vendor manager internally is the one that should give you the primary contact at the vendor. But from there, we allow the primary contact at the vendor to manage his own team, create additional users, and the system will send them the exact same email with a link and an ID and password and request them to go in and, and, and change that. And we do this because some of these questionnaires are huge. I mentioned that earlier with the SIG. This allows the primary contact to delegate sections of vendor risk assessments to these other team members. So if we look at the team, we have the primary, we have two more that have been invited. Another has been invited and is already logged in and you can tell where they are. And then you can say, show me the engagement contacts for, for the different projectors. And we can say, well, I want to make four the primary contact for this one. I'm going to remove two. And then let's go to the service outsourcing. And I can say, I want three to be the primary contact and remove four. So the delegation is pretty easy to do from a vendor manager standpoint on the vendor side. We can go back to the assessments and you can see that this assessment for the hardware engagement assessment, it's basically sitting there waiting and we're looking for questionnaires and document requests. And this is where the configuration comes into play on our side and what we would want to do before we ever roll this out live. So let's take a look at that configuration before we go any further. Let's go to the assessment configuration. We're going to go down into the assessment templates and questionnaire templates and document request templates under the assessment setup. The assessment template is a bundle. And you can see we have several configured here, some of which reference an actual date. These are from the SIG, the Standardized Information Gathering Assessment. And you can have multiple because people may not on their end have gotten around to using the 2019. If they have the 2018, they can upload that into the system. So there's that huge spreadsheet can be uploaded directly and then all they have to do is fill in anything that's missing. But when we look at say the quality assessment template, it consists of questionnaires and document requests. And we do it this way because a document re request can be something very simple that says, if you have a report or a document, upload it and you're done. If you have an ISO certification and you are a facilities group, then we want to see your ISO cert. So upload that document. If you have a SOC 1 or SOC 2 reports, upload those documents for us. Document requests are very simple. It's, it's, a, it's a simple question, the attachment feature, and that's it. The questionnaire is the actual survey. These assessment templates allow us to create specific questionnaires and document requests for specific industries. Uh, I can have an assessment template specific for physical security, one that's specific for cloud service providers, another one that is, say, janitorial. I don't need to go in and create these ad hoc. I can have them all set up, ready to go, pick the template I want. It will add the document requests and the questionnaires, and then I can send them to the end user. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back to Acer. And we're going to say I'm going to do a new assessment. And I'm going to give it a name, and I'm going to pick the assessment template. 
I'm going to pick the quality assessment we had looked at earlier. You'll notice there's some automation uh, behind the scenes to fill out data. It's going to say that the risk rating is valid for a year from at this point. It's still in draft. It's no problem. And then we look at our schedule. I'm going to give the whole assessment process 30 days. That's cool. I'm going to give the vendor 10 days. These are the out of the box numbers. And I'll tell you right now, almost every single client has changed these out of the box numbers because the vendor takes a lot longer than 10 days to get these questionnaires submitted back to them. But this is the way it is out of the box. And that's, that's pretty easy to change as a default. I'm going to save this. And you notice the automation has said, okay, you picked this template, the bundle. So I'm going to send this questionnaire and these two document requests. All I have to do is when I'm ready, click submit to vendor. And now these assessments have been sent. You can see they are sitting there submitted. This one as well. And now if I go back home as the Acer primary, I should be able to go to my assessments and see that right here is my quality assessment that was just submitted to me. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to look at my different values here. Let's look at the sample section A, B, and C standard assessment engine functionality. Again, if you've built a survey, you can build a vendor risk assessment. We have a couple of options though. I can say, you know what, show me the ones where I need to follow up with the company. Nothing. Show me the ones that are unanswered. Pretty much everything. We'll go ahead and answer some of these. And then we'll go to the next one and we have the different sections. Now, if I go back to this and we look at some of the document requests, I can see that this is in progress. It tells me how many I've answered, which is nice. And then I can say, you know what? Let's assign this to three and two so that they can work on it as well. My SOC 1 report, I'm going to assign that to three. And my SOC 2 report, I'm going to assign that to four. Now they have the ability to come in, they will get notified. They have the ability to come in and actually do these. And again, like I said, the SOC report is pretty simple. Yes, I have one, attach your document and you're done. That's all that these reports are. The one thing to remember as you deal with the vendor contacts, only the primary vendor contact associated with an assessment is allowed to click the button and submit back to the system. And they can do so even if things are in progress or have not been started. This is because ServiceNow has had a lot of its own vendors that it uses this with tell them that they need more help with this and they want to set up calls or a WebEx or something and go through it with them. That's not a problem because it's completely collaborative. I'm going to submit the assessment. It's going to say that these are incomplete. So I'm going to say on my SOC, I'm going to say no. We'll exit there on my SOC 2. I'm going to say no. Now I can submit. I do want to submit. And you'll see it here on this side, the responses have been updated. I'll do a quick reload. And now I can actually view the responses. I can work with the vendor and view the responses and say, okay, for your SOC 1, let's see what you said. You said you didn't have one. Okay, so I'm going to create an issue. And I'm going to add a comment for a vendor and make sure that we follow up. And I'm going to say, for my own team, need to know why. And then I'm going to, for the vendor, say, we have to have a SOC 1 in order to proceed. 
Now, notice that I said include this question when creating an issue. I'm going to create the issue, and it's going to tell me yes that I've done so. Okay, and then I'm going to return this to the vendor. So I've added comments. I'm going to return it to the vendor. I said yes. I've got to make comments, and I'm going to give him a few days longer. Let's give him three more days to do this. All right, a lot going on in the background. Our, our, our days have been updated automatically. This says it was returned, it's 50% complete. I'm gonna refresh here on the back end and I can now see that this quality assessment has been returned and I can continue working on it. Now, as I mentioned, this is completely collaborative. So I'm gonna open this up. And now I can see that he has given me his comment and I can see that here. But I'm going to go even further on this side. We opened up an issue. I'm gonna open that issue and I'm going to include the vendor in the resolution. So let's take this, I'm gonna say this is critical. I can see down here the question that was involved. They do not have a SOC 1 report. So let's address this and say the vendor has to remediate. We have to have a SOC 1. And I can assign this out. First thing I'm going to do is, is, is assign it to a group internally. And we'll just pick somebody. And there's no users. And that's OK. We'll move it to analyze. Okay, now I'm going to say, you know what, let's submit this to the vendor and I want it visible on the portal. And I'm going to leave this open. So here I am on the vendor side of the house. Yes, I know you need one, I'll get to it later. Wait a minute, what's this? I have an issue. Let's open up the issue. Oh, this is critical. They've just created it and it's that, they, okay, so they have to have, fine. Let's go attach a file. I go and I attach my SOC 1 report and I, oh, and it shows up over here. Complete collaboration presence is honored between the vendor portal and the frame set. Um, the vendor can see that I am working on it with him. I can see that the vendor is actually looking at the issue, that he's updating it. And I can say, here's my report. And automatically, I see this here. This is designed to get people off the phone and out of email and get them to collaboratively work on the issues in real time together. I've seen multiple clients ask ServiceNow for this exact functionality internally so that a control attestation or a risk assessment or a change risk assessment or a resolution survey for an incident can have this type of functionality where you can, you can be gathering the data or, or submitting data from the end user standpoint and collaboratively work with them to make sure that the right data is input or that anything is addressed that needs to be at that final point in time. So we've addressed this. I'm going to resolve the issue. The issue automatically goes to review. We'll reload the form. And I'm going to back out of this. And now I can, as the vendor manager, I can review. Yes, here's his SOC 1 report. We're good. We can close this out. So now I'm back to my vendor assessment. I've addressed my issue, it's closed complete. My vendor risk area has been defined for me. This is a security risk because of the nature of the questionnaires that we have sent. And right now, because what we've gotten back, this is a high risk vendor. There are other issues we need to address with them. We have to get the vendor to respond to the SOC 2. We have to get the vendor to complete the rest of the assessment. A lot of clients have told me that if this were to come back, they would not even proceed. 
with the rest of this. If the vendor does not want to take the time to finish the assessment, they won't even consider them. It's basically the idea of asking for the SIG in a spreadsheet and the vendor waits two weeks and says, oh, I'm, I'm working on it, I'm working on it, and you never get it. They will basically kill the, the entire assessment and just cancel it. We're not dealing with this anymore. What that allows you to do, however, is keep the historical history of the interactions with the vendor. Oh, two years later, somebody says, hey, this is, this is a great vendor. We want to deal with them. You can go back and look and say, well, you might want to rethink that because our past experience is that they're not that great to work with. They have problems coming up with documentation. They are not timely in their responses, et cetera, et cetera. Having gone through all of this, there is one more layer of automation that can be put into play. And it is the idea of repeating this assessment on a regular basis. Now I can say if there is any incorrect answer, create an issue for me when I go to generating observations. It will automatically do that. But the idea of saying, I want to redo a vendor assessment every year is a completely separate record. The repeating assessment record basically allows me to define the time frame that the next assessment should take place. And the repeating assessment is basically for the vendor, we want to do the next assessment nine months from the completion of the first one, and that one should end three months later. Now, the results are only good for one year. These are the out-of-the-box values. I've seen a lot of clients say, well, no, we're going to do one every three years. So the next assessment creation should be in 32 months, the next assessment end date should be 36. The results should be valid for 1,092 days. Uh, once you set this up and you apply it to the vendor risk assessment, simply applying it here and completing the assessment and closing it will start the trigger. And the system will start watching and every day it will say, is there a repeating assessment? There is. Is it related to a vendor risk assessment that has been closed for that proper time frame? And if it sees one that matches those parameters, it will automatically generate a brand new vendor risk assessment. It will be in draft and it will allow you to simply say, yes, this is still the right vendor contact. These are still the right questionnaires. Send it on. The one big miss, and this is the final piece of vendor risk, basically the concept of reporting, is it's very difficult to get a perspective of what's pending for repeating assessments. There's lots of information on where vendors sit real time. My vendor classifications, my open issues, my vendors by risk rating, upcoming vendor risk assessments that are simply set to work going forward, but the system seeing the repeating assessments, there's no out of the box report to do that. I've worked with a couple of clients trying to do that. It's kind of difficult because of the, the joins you'd have to do between the repeating assessment and the actual assessment. But reporting is pretty robust from both a vendor and an engagement standpoint of everything that is going on and where our vendors sit both by tier, by industry, by type, by risk rating, by open issues, and these are out of the box. All right, as always, if you do come up with a question, feel free to send me an email. Thank you everyone for your time today and hope you have a great week.